and gentlemen, after 21 years of Autodesk pulling your pants down, lubing you up and violating you aggressively with the DWF stick, they've finally given in. They finally let it go after their relentless, their relentless stubborn pursuit to try and get you to use DWF instead of PDF. They have finally given it up and they've just went with the modern world. They've accepted that nobody likes their goddamn stupid DWF file format and it's ridiculous, unbelievably worthless viewing software design review. They finally let it go, and uh, now I've just got to wait for the Vault team to catch up. But the Inventor team have taken the first step. They've taken the punt. Uh, they've took one for the team, and they've introduced 3D PDFs into Autodesk Inventor. It's finally here. Right, so what we've got here is, a, is an assembly, as you can see, obviously. And uh, on the file menu, under Export, you now have 3D PDF. <laughs> Woo! Right, and it's it's actually it's actually not all that bad. It's the first iteration. It's the first swing. There's a there's a there's a bit of work to do on it. There will be inevitably, but it's a good effort, Autodesk, and I commend you for that. I salute you for that, and I bow my cap and say, well done, sir. And let's just keep banging away at this until it's on the money, until it's creamy. It's the cherry on the cake. Let's have a look at what it can do. So they've obviously, they've, they've either licensed it or they've purchased this uh, Anarch Quad. I've never heard of them. Uh, not very many people have. But um, it's powered by these guys. Uh, I don't really care as long as it works. So powered by Anarch Core. And what you do, it's it's just exporting really. It's no different than the DWF export. So you can pick and choose what properties you include with the D, with the PDF. So if you want someone to know what your part numbers are and your titles and your authors and your comments and all that kind of stuff. You can include all of these properties which will be readable in the final PDF. And the PDF itself, the the resultant model and what it includes is based off design view reps, which sort of ties in nicely with this video I'll link up here with regard to levels of detail in design view reps and where you should and shouldn't use them. So design view reps will control what parts are visible inside the final PDF. And you've got visualization quality here as well. This will I mean, I haven't lined any up side by side yet, but I've done a couple of exports on the different qualities, and uh, you just get different file sizes on face value. There is quite a, there is quite a significant file size difference between the three outputs, but in terms of visual quality, I'm not too sure. Uh, and unless you unless you're banging out like a massive assembly, I would always stick with high. What you got to lose? Most email systems these days can cope with uh, pretty large files, so just go with high. And then for the template, right, the template's a bit of an odd one, right? We've we've, we've had a bit of a conflab over the beta, in, in the beta period, over what templates are, why they're there, what they're for, that kind of stuff. If you hit the browse button, you get four templates. You've got blank, uh, DVR, carousel, which, I mean, where did that come from? I have no idea. Maybe it came with the Anarch core. But you've got like a sample assembly template and a sample part template. Basically, if you don't give a shit about the template, right? If you don't give a shit about the, the final PDF having a border around it, which when are you gonna, right? When are you gonna? And you just want if you just want to send somebody a model. There's your model. That's that's your 3D PDF. That's the 3D design in a PDF, right? If that's all you care about, just go a blank. If you want a border around it with like properties and parts lists and stuff, then you can you can mess around with like the, the sample assembly template, which will have that. But uh, we'll just go a blank for now. And that'll stay as default, right? The output location, obviously, that's where it's going to put the PDF. So we'll drop that on my desktop. Save. View the PDF when finished. Was well, obviously going to open up Acrobat when uh, once it's finished exporting. And down here, this is quite juicy. This you can include attachments. Uh, so what it can do, it can generate and attach a step file at the same time. When would you do that though? When would you do that? I, I don't know. Maybe this is like some sort of uh, un unique previous case with, which a customer's asked for and Autodesk have thought, well, someone asked for that, so maybe other people want it. I'm sure there will be a use case for it, but off the top of my head, I can't think of what it is. However, this button here, attachments, this one is really good. This lets you create a 2D PDF. For example, just one example, you could create a 2D PDF, then PDF the model, and then attach the drawn PDF and you'll have a, a doubled PDF, won't you? You'll have the 3D model and the 2D drawn in the same PDF. So that'll let you do that in one go. So you hit attachments, and then you'll go to this dialog box here, add file, and then you'll browse to your 2D PDF, and it'll package it up inside the PDF you're about to make. So then you hit publish, and then you'll get this uh, funky sort of express view, express mode type uh, progress bar up here on the screen. I've got to admit, right, I've got to admit, after, through all the testing that I've done, it does take a lot longer to create the PDFs than it previously did with DWFs. 
and that's uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's because of the the software that they've, they've bought in to do it it's probably not the control of autodesk but the export process does take a little bit longer than i would like depending on the size of your model the bigger your assembly the longer it's going to take smallish parts don't take too long a couple of seconds that's it but anything anything with like you know dozens of parts in assemblies takes a little bit longer than i would like but hey i'll take that over not having this ability <laughs> And we're done. I've had to video edit a little bit there because it took way longer than I would have liked. About two minutes to make that PDF, which is, uh, it's there's definite room for improvement there. I can see that being patched at some point in the future. Right, PDF is made. What I'm going to do now is open it up and we'll take a look at it because there's a few things to note in the 3D PDF. Right, the first things first. In the version of Acrobat Reader that I've got, which I think is the most recent one, actually. I think it's the most current one. 3D content is disabled by default. So what you've got to do, and this is just completely off memory, is go into the preferences, right? Go into the options of Acrobat Reader, and then enable the playing of 3D content. Uh, and there's a, there's another couple of options in here which you could probably change uh, if you wanted to, but uh, that was one of them, right? So then let's re-enable it. Uh, let's reopen it, and then that should work straight from the off. There we go. So there you go. There's your 3D PDF, man. Look at that. Look at that. Right, the orbit and tool within the PDF is, it's well, it's not CAD, is it? It's not going to be CAD. Uh, it's one of these bizarre sort of, you hold the left mouse button down, move the mouse, and it's, it rotates in a way that you're not really familiar with. It's one of those things. Uh, but let's have a look back at the Inventor model, see how familiar it is. Right, well, you can see straight away there's a, there's a couple of colour differences uh, between the original model and the, uh, and the, the PDF. So, for example, we've got an orange, we've got something orange here, like a, I don't even know what that is, so it's, yeah, it's like a, really, really, yeah, it's like an orange, uh, it's like an orange cap sitting on top of these two valves back here. So, if we go back to the PDF, uh, they're, they're grey, so there's some texture issues in the PDFs. Anything with a, with a colour override on it, the PDF doesn't really handle it very well, so that's something to, to oh, mother and we're back. And yeah, that's a, that's about really it for what to watch out for. Uh, th the rest of it, it's all it's all positive actually. The PDF in itself. Let's just take a look at the, the file size of it. This is uh, 3.46 megabytes in size. Now I've done a comparison between a PDF and a DWF of the exact same model. And the PDF does come out in as, as a larger file size than the DWF. But but whoever's receiving this file ain't gonna care as long as they can open it and it's not a DWF and they don't have to download that stupid viewing package, which Autodesk just haven't done any work on in the last four years. So as long as they don't have to open that thing, they're, they're going to be happy because they've already got Acrobat Reader. So they'll be happy with that, right? This toolbar at the top, this is what you use to manipulate and look around the DWF, uh, the P... Oh my God, did I just say DWF? I said DWF. I meant PDF. <laughs> look around the PDF. Right, you've got, um, you've got your design views here, which um, lets you flick between the different design views that you might have included in the PDF. And then this button here turns on the, the model tree, which lets you view... The, the components, so you can turn things off, you can turn things on, you can hide things, you can uh, look at the, it's not really the bill of materials as such, but it's just a broken down parts list. And if you think it to yourself, well, I don't really want to include a parts list with it, well, you've got to kind of think about that before you make the PDF. If you want to export a dumb solid without a model tree, you're going to have to approach it in a different way. Maybe derive the the assembly into a part file first, shrink wrap it down, and then PDF that. So you have to have a think about that first. Uh, there may be in the future other ways of maybe simplifying the the assembly as it's being PDF, but at the moment I haven't seen any options that let you do that as of yet. All right, the other things up the top, these are just some visibility control options. So you've got the perspective mode and orthographic mode, so that puts the camera into perspective mode, which is qu that's quite nice actually. That's pretty nice for a PDF. Uh, and the, the the mouse button's a little bit funky. I keep going for the middle button. You can hear me clicking the middle button and it's not panning. You've got to change that here. So you've got to go to pan and then that'll let you pan. Uh, and then you can go to zoom. You've got walk, fly. You can actually get quite specific with the camera properties. You can um, you can align the camera. You can spin the camera with the, you know, with the slide bars and stuff. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with this. Whether or not you're going to use any of those, probably not. Probably not unless you're doing like a high level presentation. Uh, but would you use a PDF for that? I don't know. I don't know. All right, lighting. Uh, this, well, no, this is lighting. This is model. This is model visuals. It's the way the model is being presented to you in the PDF. So you've got the standard solid outline. Uh, you've got illustration, which actually again, that's pretty nice. That that is pretty nice. That is pretty solid. Those lines are crisp. They're, they're pretty crisp. There's no pixelation going on there. Those pixels are not not distorting in any way, and that's nice. I like that. Solid wireframe. So you've got that. You've got uh, transparent again. Nice. Nice, I'm done with that. Shaded illustration, again, 
cheesy, loving it. Shaded wife. Oh, I like that. That's well. That looks very technical. It looks like I know what I'm doing. So there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of crispy stuff in here, which is which is good to see. Right, let's put it back on solid outline. Now you've got some of the lighting options in here. By default, you get cube lights. Now I don't know what that means, but the rest of these lighting options, you've got primary color lights, you've got uh, white lights, you've just got different lighting. I mean, come on, what, you, do you really care? Cat optimized lighting. I mean, who knows what that even means? Headlamp. I don't know. I don't know. Blue lights, but you know, the standard one is cube lights. And then finally, you've got your cross section planes where you can say show a cross section. Uh, you could do this in the in the DWF. So this is this is nothing really new, but it's just good to know that it's there. So you've got your cross section plane. You can go to your cross section properties where you can change the, the you know the axis of the plane. That's that's uh, doing the cross section. Uh, you can align it to a face. You can align it at three points. And then you can use the slide bars to sort of move this the plane upwards and downwards, tilt it around, uh, change the whether or not it shows sort of red lines like slice points uh, across the plane. And whether or not show the plane at all, that sort of stuff. So there's a lot, there's a lot of good stuff in there. I like it. I like it. It's good as a first pass. However, the texture problems, they could be a thing. They could be a thing because anything that does have a texture on it, your carbon fiber pattern, anything tiled, anything wood, anything brushed metal, it's not going to come through into the PDF. Whether or not it's reasonable to expect it to come through, I don't know. I don't know how applications handle textures being put into read-only documents like this when it's cross-platform. I don't know. I don't know. But it would have been nice if it was there. Maybe that's something for the future. Right, that's pretty much it. That's 3D PDF. Thank you, Autodesk. Thank you, finally. Someone inside has finally saw sense and decided to let go of their relentless onslaught of DWFs. I mean, come on, you haven't you haven't done anything with your bloody viewer. Design review still at 2013. You haven't done anything with it for like three or four years. So it's good to see this. This is good to see. Now, Vault team, pull your thumbs out, pick your game up, and get this implemented into Vault, and then we're, we'll be there. We'll be there. We'll be friends. We'll be mates. We'll be buddies. We'll be pals. We'll be mates, eh? Eh? Just get get PDFs into Vault, natively supported by Vault, and we'll all be fine. It'll all be rosy in the garden. Thank you very much, guys. This is What's New in Inventor 2017, 3D PDFs, and I'll see you in the next video. Toodles. <laughs>